Okay. How's everybody going? How's everybody going? Are you going or coming? Either way, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a roast that I have not made in many years. And a lot of people I know are like, they've never heard of it. And I did it back in North Carolina in the uh, late 70s and 80s. I know this isn't sponsored, but we're going to use Angostria Aromatic Bitters. I know people are like, what? Trust me on this. It's good. It was in no, uh, no cookbook or anything, and... I had a whole box of my father's uh, drink mixes and stuff, and that, there was a bottle of that in there, and so I just decided to try it with some roast one time, and everybody liked it. Nobody had tasted anything like it, and now I see that it's in the, um, it's on the internet and stuff, but Anyway, we we're gonna start with this. I've cut it, or I've I just got through washing some potatoes. So this is how we're gonna cut these potatoes. And no, I'm not taking the skin off. You can if you want. As for me, I like the skin. When I was little. Um, My parents, we would go out, you know, to eat somewhere, and people are going to think, everyone's going to think my parents were bad. They were really good. But we'd go out to eat somewhere, and uh, they knew that I wouldn't eat the inside of the potato. Uh, and I don't know why either. You know, they, uh, I just didn't like the inside of the potato. You know, if we went someplace that had uh, had French fries with the skin on, <laughs> literally they would uh, pull the skin off and give it to me. But if we went someplace else and they had baked potatoes, uh, my mother would eat the inside of the potato and give me the skin and people would just look like oh that's awful and uh and she asked the the doctor one time if it was okay and he says that's where all the nutrients and stuff are yes it's okay and uh So that kind of sealed that idea. Yes, I do wash my hands an awful lot. Close. Now, if you're uh, a 
Italian and you like garlic, you can use more garlic if you want to. Um, and I know some people demand the garlic be cut up fine because in their work nobody wants to taste a big chunk of garlic. Well, I like garlic. But it's all up to you. This is my kitchen. And these are my rules, right? Yeah. Isn't it funny how times have changed? When I was uh, little, it was rare that you saw men cooking very much. I mean, unless they were the chef in a in a restaurant or something like that, that's different. Oh, and if you're wondering, I'll show you in a second where all this is going. It's going in a new slow cooker, my old slow cooker. Had some major problems. It was uh, 15 years old or, or more, I don't know. And uh, it was actually bent up and everything else. So I finally decided um, it's time that I need a, a new slow cooker. And they didn't have any on sale at the military exchange. So, but they always have good deals anyway. And I saw this, and I thought, okay. I'm going to give it a shot. And so I ordered it and came in and now Marquois These things will break down as they're cooking. And one of the things you want to do for sure is put the the items that take the longest to cook on the bottom. And I may just add another onion because it tastes good. And I'll throw my peeled carrots in there. Cut up a couple of stalks of celery. And I 
know you're going to be going. What's he doing? He's throwing the leaves and all in there. That's right. I am throwing the leaves and all in there. Nothing wrong with that leaf. This whole bunch, I might just... The only part of the leaf, if it, if it looks bad, if it's old and brown, yeah, you probably, it's just, it'll taste good, but the aesthetics of it, people may not like. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm standing in front of you. Celery's kind of powerful once it gets cooking, and I don't want it to uh, overpower the, the taste. Now, I'm not supposed to have I'm not supposed to have um, rib meat. But I think some of the time especially me Like I'm making it, I'm not a MD, but and once in a while it's okay to have this. Now then, we're going to flip over here. to the uh, skillet and it has not been heating up or anything so what I've got going on right now in the bag is the roast and it's a tri-tip roast it was uh, pretty much all they had where I went to, uh, to buy meat one night before it snowed. That's pretty amazing. But that's all they had. And if you're wondering what I'm, what I have going on in here. In the bag is I've got a I've got my tri-tip roast right now kind of covered in uh, 
kind of covered in Nanguesta bitters. We are going to add a tad bit of soy sauce. Probably a tablespoon for four. A little bit of teriyaki sauce. And I think I developed these flavors. From being overseas so much and, and going into the uh, to the restaurants and everything and seeing what they've got. And watching how they made stuff. I'm also going to throw some uh, bay leaves in this. I've got some new bay leaves on order, but and we're gonna we're gonna add some oil. Let's go with uh, a little bit of vegetable oil. And it's a heart healthy vegetable oil also. And I sprinkled a little uh, salt and pepper on the meat. And I know you're saying, he said this won't be a roast. Well, some people like to. Uh, like it brown and when you put it in a slow cooker it doesn't usually come out brown with any type of crust on it and since this is a uh, I'm massaging my meat. The meat. The object of this is just to get a crust on it. Now while it's doing that, we're going to give it like a couple of minutes on each side. And we're just, the whole object of this is just to add a crust to seal the juices of the actual meat into it. And like I say, it's been, uh, it's been soaking in the Gwishka bitters. And this meat probably would be kind of, uh, tough to eat as it is, but I mean it's a tri-tip, so maybe, maybe not. And what's going to be kind of interesting here to a lot of people
those are bamboo sticks and the reason I'm doing that is they will actually absorb the liquid as the meat is cooking you could use uh, toothpicks which is what I used to use a lot but I ran out of toothpicks so I decided I'd use this the bamboo sticks and uh, that works really well now one of the sides I'm trying to get uh, a little bit more now I think y'all have seen plenty of what I'm doing here so we are going to swing around To my new uh, slow cooker. Of course, there's no real juices left in there. But my kitchen already smells amazing. Now, what we're going to do. I have a jug of water it should be about fine there don't want to overdo it too much because then we'll end up with uh, stuff bubble, bubbling over and and that's no good that's no fun because I plan on leaving this in for probably oh you know, well a long time <laughs> That I assure you. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to see if I can get that meat to sit down in there a little bit. It will. But you see, you see how those bamboo sticks are uh, absorbing the, the juices already. Now, I don't know if, yeah, you might be able to see that meat absorbing the juices. some pepper and it's freshly cracked which is what I like to use actually is freshly cracked pepper we're going to use some salt This is actually just to get this going. You can adjust the uh, salt and pepper after it's cooked tender enough for you.
Okay, we're gonna put this puppy and so on. And let's go for we're gonna put it on for ten hours. And I know you're seeing me do this. Here's one. Why it's gonna get dirty. I'm a I'm a clean freak. Now, another ingredient that we're going to put this in there. It's probably about two tablespoons of Anguisha bitters. done for about 10 hours and I'll check on it once in a while because this is a brand new uh, uh, slow cooker so yeah I'll check on it once in a while to make sure it's not bubbling over or sizzling or frying or shorting out or or whatever but I do have the uh, extended warranty on it in case it does fry or something but you see how that's done it's easy and uh, and people could put this on before work and it'd be done when you come home and as as it cooks things are gonna get smaller and you can add more like I said I'd probably add more onion or something like that as it as it starts to shrink and you know what I'll do is I'll get back with y'all in 10 hours and show you uh, what's happening what it's like and give it a taste and see what we got and so anyway y'all take care and I'll see you in 10 hours, okay? Okay, I'm back. Back, back, back. And my apartment smells amazing. It is. It really does. I'm hungry. And, oh, by the way, um, oh, let me show you when I get this open. I'm going to get a bowl. if I want a spoon or a fork. Anyway, if y'all hear some clicking, don't worry about that. It's not the camera. It's not uh, it's not your um, computer. What people don't see is I walk with a cane. If you saw me in public, you'd know it, but uh, yeah, I walk with a cane. I've got five herniated discs in my lower back and five in my neck. And but it's all good. I've had that since 2006. November the 2nd, 2006, when I was injured. So, yeah, I'm still cruising along. They told me that I'd be in a wheelchair by the time I was, uh, well, within 10 years. And that was in 2006. And I've gotten way past that. So, hey. I'm not worried about it. I'm happy. You know, I'm like a... I'm kind of like that guy Bob Ross. Let's just be happy and put a little tree here and keep on going, you know. <laughs> it's all good. You know, I have my good days and bad days.
So anyway, this shall we flip this around a little bit here? I mean that meat's just falling apart, and it smells so good. Now, liquid on this, you can actually, uh, you can put, oh, you could drain some of it out into a, uh, into a, a pan or something and, and put some cornstarch in it, or you can put some cornstarch in this, uh, mix it with some water, some, you know, cold water and put it on high and let it start going and then, uh, mix it in with the uh, liquids and until it gets the consistency of a gravy that you like or you can uh, use it as a au jus and uh, or a French dip you can use French rolls and dip in there uh, also it keeps very well in the freezer which is I think I mentioned this uh, when I start making this that, that uh, I wasn't supposed to have a whole lot of uh, red meat, and I think most doctors are uh, stating that now. But I figure once in a while is okay, you know. Once, maybe once a week, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how this uh, next blood test comes out. Um, but anyway, if it comes out good, then I know one once a week is good for me, and it won't won't hurt anything because uh, my a1c and all that I'm be I have to be watching that uh, but anyway uh, I can freeze this you know I can't eat it all at once or it will it'll just blow my a1c right out of the water and my doctor will be calling me saying what's going on with you, <laughs> you know? but anyway now see, when y'all saw me uh, use salt and pepper, that was just the beginning. After you put it in a, in your bowl, you can uh, add more salt and pepper. Oh, and I also added mushroom. You don't have to. I know a lot of people don't, but I had... Um, half of a half a box of sliced white mushrooms. I usually put mushrooms on salad because they're good for you, and uh, they got a lot of vitamin D. And some people put shallots on this and this and uh, other things. I mean, I like to experiment too. It's, it's your, it's your, uh, your makeup. You can do what you want to with it, you know. Have fun with it and cook with it. Uh, let's see. I think I'll go with it. Well, I know the celery is definitely uh, tender. It's not too hot. Mm. Potatoes, perfect. Carrots are perfect. Now I'm spinning this meat because you can also use a pork roast instead of a beef roast if you want to. Okay. Yum, yum, yum.
<laughs> Sorry about that. That was a big piece. I should have taken a smaller piece. Or I had a cameraman or camera woman and offered them some. And that's how you do it. That way, y'all aren't waiting on me to say something like, Is this bull? Did he live? What's, why is this taking so long? But yeah, that's uh. And if you want to, I mean, this dish is so versatile, you can add some more. As a matter of fact, I'm going to. Give it a little shake here. Add some more Ingresta bitters. not going to make and no I'm not getting sponsored by them I don't have any sponsors yet but it's not going to make your uh, your dish taste bitter it will not now I mean you might put a whole bunch in there and make it taste bitter or something but Let's just see. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Anyway, this is, like I said, this is a very versatile dish. Some people have wine to it. And, um... Usually white wine. Uh, but most people don't use the bitters. And that's what's kind of funny about this. I'm opening up and um, I started using the bitters, like I said, back in North Carolina. And, you know, I'd opened up my father. I had a box from my father. Uh, it had all of his drink mixers and stuff like that in it, and the bitters was in there. And we are talking late 70s, early 80s, and we didn't have uh, computers or anything like that. And I like to experiment, and I like the smell of the bitters. And uh, so I says, hmm, I wonder if these would be good. In pot roast and so I tried it and it was very very good I liked it and uh, so I didn't put it online because there was no computers back then I mean we had computers in the Marine Corps but they were like it was just stupid back then you know but anyway I mean 9400 baud modems and stuff but yeah, and we'd use a Zenith computer, which you had these big 8-inch floppy disks. Uh, and then they went down to a 3.5-inch floppy disk. And it, it was just, you weren't connected to anyone per se, unless you used the 9400 Bob modem, which tied up your phone line. And it was so slow. But anyway... Uh, my ex-wife, I know she's probably, because I know she trolls me, <laughs> which is okay. We get along, uh, but she's never asked. I saw her actually make a statement one time uh, talking to some people at her house how my how she wished she had the recipe for my uh, pot roast. <laughs> and uh, all she had to do was ask, and I just I didn't say anything. I just laughed when I heard that because she tried to mimic my pot roast, but she didn't know that I had used the Angusta bitters, and also um, she didn't know that I uh, I braised or or actually got kind of uh, uh, cooked the uh, 
the pot roast first, you know, just to get some color on it. And I, you know, in the in a hot skillet, and also uh, um, I had let it sit for about thirty minutes with the anguish, the bitters, some salt and pepper on it before I. It, Oh, and I added some little bit of uh, soy sauce in there too, and let it sit for 30 minutes before I actually put it in the hot pan, hot skillet. And then I stuck, um, you guys saw me stick the three uh, pieces of bamboo skewers in it. And what those do is they absorb the, uh, the liquids around it and it goes into the meat. And, but back then I was using toothpicks and I'd put maybe, I don't know, a dozen toothpicks all around the roast and then put it in there. It looked like a little porcupine or something, uh, cooking in the, in the slow cooker. And, uh, we have one of those round ones that I'm sure everybody's seen before. And anyway, uh. Yeah, she could never get it right, so now I'm sure she's going to be, she may even leave a comment saying, thank you, thank you. <laughs> anyway, that's also my new Hamilton Beach slow cooker, and it worked very well. I didn't have to worry about anything. It kicked it off into warm, um, I guess, which was automatic, which the other ones you had to actually uh, manually change. And so this is... Uh, an automatic uh, you know it's kind of automatic digital button you know I laugh about that because I guarantee if my wife uh, posted a comment she'd probably say I told you about those buttons one day you're gonna push a button and disappear and <laughs> so anyway I hope you enjoyed this I hope you get something out of it I hope you make it and try it and uh, it's good comfort food and like I say you can freeze it you know and I'll put it in uh, um, little containers and have some once a week and not have to do this for a while so that helps too and if you got kids hey put it in one of those containers and uh freeze it and if the kids come home from school and they're hungry they can pop that out and pop it in the microwave and they're good to go you know so give me a thumbs up if you like this and um, and let me know if you changed something that you thought was really good, if you added something or whatever, and uh, just drop that down in the comments too. I like comments, and y'all stay safe, stay warm if you're in a cold place, and uh, if you're in a warm place, go to the beach. You know, send me some seafood, because <laughs> in Arizona I had sticker shock when I got here and I saw $10 for a pound of shrimp. I was like, <gasps> you know, and I love to cook, but yeah, it's expensive here. Even though we got Cal, we border California, and then uh, we we got Mexico also. Yeah, the price of uh, seafood here is pretty expensive. You know, so this is my uh, I love to cook, and this is let's take a. I know I've got a, a spoon and a fork in there now. But that meat's nice and brown and it tastes so good. And it's yummy. So you guys take care, stay safe, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Y'all have a good one.